Okay guys, I can personally vouch from experience that if you will just put the tips I'm about to cover into practice, you will absolutely be more confident on your next check ride. And this isn't like a hacks video. I'm not being like, oh, if you read books, you'll get the Ferrari behind me or whatever. I'm not doing any of that. These are real tips given to me by real people over the course of time that I promise made my, I've taken three different check rides, my private, my seaplane, and my instrument, and they got radically easier over time as I kind of put these things into action. And so if you're like Steven, who reached out to me and said, I'm just downright terrified of the check ride and I feel stuck in the mud. Um, I wanted to put this video together for, for all of us that are maybe nervous about the check ride and you can never get rid of all the nerves. But there's some definitely actionable things that you can do that I promise, I promise it's going to help. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get rid of the expectation that you won't be nervous. Like if I'm just ready enough, I won't be nervous. Like you can have confidence, but I think you'll be nervous about anything you truly care about. Like when I proposed to my now wife, I was super nervous, but it wasn't nervous because I was afraid of the outcome. I wasn't questioning whether or not she'd say yes. I just, it was something I cared about, right? And so you're nervous about the moment. And I think that's how check rides are. So if we just adjust our, our expectation, um, I think it's gonna help you feel a lot better because nerves aren't gonna be like a bad signal. It's just like, oh yeah, that actually tells me that I care a lot about this. And that's okay, because I do care about it. So let's get our expectations right. The second thing I think you should do is to go ahead and really get in your mind that the examiner is not there to fail you. They're not the boogeyman. They're not the grim reaper on your pilot career, right? They are there to make uh, a really, really important decision about you as a pilot. You think about your private check ride, like they are literally the gatekeeper uh, to other people getting in the airplane with you, right? And, and that's an enormous amount of responsibility. And so, yeah, you know, you got to, you know, pass the standards, the, the, the stuff in the ACS, the Airman Certification Standards, but they're also making a judgment call. Like, is this guy going to hurt other people? And I'm really responsible for that because I hold the keys, right? And uh, if they need to fail you to keep you from hurting someone, classic guys, my dog's barking. So got to wait that out. Okay, so what I was saying is if he needs, he or she needs to fail you uh, in order to keep you from hurting someone, they totally will. But they're not showing up just to fail you. You, you got to remember that, you know, you look at the pass rate, depending on what rating you're talking about, what, what license, you know, pass rate is usually around 70, 80 percent on, uh, on, on check rides and stuff. And so, uh, you know, odds are really on your side here. And, and the kicker is, you know, all the questions, you know, the test, right? You look at the airman uh, certification standards, you know what they're going to ask you. Right. And so, um, I, I think just having that mindset is super, super important to getting that comfort level. The next really helpful thing to do is to isolate where you're weak in, what are you nervous about? And let's put it on the calendar. Let's not just kind of focus on that. Let's actually take the next step to put it on the calendar. So if there's some like weather theory or aircraft systems or even flight maneuvers for that matter that you're weak in, uh, don't just think, okay, yeah, gosh, I need to work on that on top of everything else I got to go memorize in aviation, right? Like none of these things are rocket science, but the volume can be kind of intimidating. So what I have found really helpful is if there's something just kind of nagging me in the back of my head, it can be totally outside of flying or if it's work related or personal or whatever, I love just carving out some time on the calendar. And so I know like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm really worried about you know, my uh, definitions of fog and stuff or whatever. It's like, oh, I don't have to worry about that because I've carved out 6 to 6.30 a.m. on Monday that I'm going to go read it. That sounds like a bad way to start your week, though, doesn't it? So maybe that's a bad example. But you get what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to carry around the weight of being like, gosh, when am I going to get to this? Or, I, I, yeah, I need to read up on that. Like, no, well, you can just say, yeah, well, Monday from 6 to 6.30, maybe drink some coffee first. I'm going to take care of that. And then you've kind of outsourced it in your mind where you're not having to eat up mental bandwidth still worrying about it because it has its place on the calendar. That's been really helpful for me. I think it'll be helpful for you. The next thing that can really help with nerves is to try to get an inside scoop on your examiner. Depending on your situation, a lot of times either flight school or certain uh, instructors will have the lowdown on what certain examiners really like to focus on. Now, keep in mind, you already know all the questions. You know the uh, the, the ACS and the things that they have to cover, right? So there shouldn't be any curveballs there, but sometimes certain examiners like to ask you in kind of a tricky way or they want to focus on one particular area. And I've met instructors that have, you know, entire libraries of, hey, I've got, you know, 15 check rides in the last year that were taken with this examiner where once the student would, you know, pass the check ride, they just wrote down everything that happened verbatim and you can like read through those. Now, this isn't hacking anything. It's not cheating anything because again, you already know, 
the answers. Uh, you already know the questions he's going to ask, or he has to by law. Um, but I do think it helps your comfort level just to be like, hey, who's this is kind of a phantom person I'm meeting that holds the keys uh, for my check ride here. And so it can take a little bit of the mystery out of it to have the inside scoop. One thing I did during my instrument rating that I'm now a huge fan of is putting tabs in your far aim. And I actually dug up my far aim from 2016 when I got my instrument rating. See the Vision Jet on there? And uh, and you can see the, the color-coded tabs I've got on the side here. Some have definitely since fallen off because that was a, a while ago. But that helped me so much in the studying process. Instead of just going through a PDF where you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, like something about having it like physically in front of me that I, I wrote down the tab and I, I could see you know what I was trying to memorize and I remember where you know certain things were on the page. Like I don't have a photographic memory, but something about just the physical act of, of doing something with my hands and then remembering it, like helped me a ton. But the other reason I really love it is that you can bring that far aim with you to the oral uh, part of the check ride, right? And you can have it sitting there on the desk. And to me, it, it, it served as a, a really helpful reminder to say like, no, like I know my stuff and, and I, it's sitting right there. Like I've been through this so much and the examiner can see like you've got it all tabbed out and, and the, you know, the edges are all worn and you're, you know, clearly have been through it a lot. And so I don't know if that makes a difference net net you still got to get the answers right you know but uh to me as far as like memorizing the material bringing it into life and and you know off of the digital realm uh really really made a big difference for me the next thing you got to do is just get it on the calendar it, it's so easy to drag your feet uh, but i have found once it's on the calendar once you've been signed off for that check ride you just got to schedule it i think you're going to work so much harder and so uh, much more consistently once you have a date that you're working against that it's such a healthy thing if you really feel stuck in the mud like we talked about at the beginning of the video man just get it on the calendar that might be the best thing you could do for yourself now once you get it scheduled absolutely Absolutely do a mock check ride with one of your instructors if you can. That might go without saying, but in case you hadn't heard of that before, absolutely do that. It's, it's basically just a dry run of your entire check ride, the oral exam, the practical. It's going to give you a lot of comfort level having known that, that you've done this before. And, and oftentimes my mock check ride was way harder than the actual one. And then on the actual check ride flight, I highly recommend that you both slow down and try to narrate what you're doing. Slowing down is going to help you not force a mistake and rush into something. It's also going to give yourself space to, to not skip any checklists and that kind of thing. But then try to narrate what you're doing. This has been really helpful for me because it keeps me accountable as to what I'm doing and what I'm correcting in the flight, but it also lets the examiner in on what you're thinking, right? Because they can't read your mind. They don't know if if you're kind of catching a, a drift or a trend or something that is a mistake, you know, that we're headed towards or whatever. And so I would usually like to try to narrate what I'm thinking. Like if you're shooting the approach and you're trying to, you know, descend down to minimums and stuff, I would narrate, and I still do this now, you know, even outside of my check ride, like, okay, we're 1100 for 400 on course. Uh, you know, on, on glide slope, we're you know we're now 900 for 400. Uh, we're we're uh, you know correcting left. We're three degrees off. We're you know correcting. Like just just say, or if you're in the middle of steep turns and you're saying we're 50 feet high, correcting. You know, if you're way way off, maybe not like mention that right but like just the little things that you're kind of doing just try to speak up about it i you know i i think that why why couldn't that help you right i think it's going to help keep you accountable and it's going to cue the examiner in uh that you're really in control you, you know what you're doing and if you're a little bit off you at least recognize that you're off and you're trying to do something about it one other resource that i think could be helpful to you is my brand new five-day email series where i compiled the most impactful lessons that i've learned and experienced over the last 16 years of flying and put it into five days worth of emails it's just one email a day and it's the biggest like good and bad lessons that I've had in aviation that I just wanted to share with other people it's the things that I wish I could go back and tell myself 16 years ago hey here's what you're gonna do here's what you're gonna mess up uh, let's capitalize on the good stuff let's avoid the bad stuff and I put that into uh, this email series and I, I think you can enjoy it I've already gotten to know a few hundred pilots through it which has been really really awesome and I just hope that it's a helpful resource to you but you can get it totally free it's over at airplaneacademy.com join and you'll get that first email delivered today. And so I hope that that's helpful to you in your aviation journey. And uh, hey, good luck on this check ride. I really, really hope that it goes well. Um, you know, nerves are totally unavoidable to some level, but I think, you know, put these tips into practice and I, I think you'll be a little bit more or a lot more confident on your check ride. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope it's helpful. See you next week.